Hi, this is Paul from finishyoursong.com and in the last video I was looking at how to use the channel batch export facility in Cubase or your own DAW to create a series of stems that you can then send off to someone either someone you're collaborating with who's using a different DAW or someone who's going to mix the track for you. Now I kind of glossed over the options for exporting in that video uh, really just in an attempt to keep it at a manageable level but it has been commented on and I just wanted to have a look at some of the options that are available in Cubase and they're in this audio engine output section that you can see on the screen. Whether or not you're exporting for mixing or for collaboration purposes you don't want to start altering the sample rate and the bit depth of your files from the way that your project is configured and I did refer to that in the last video. But you've got the options here of a mono down mix, split channels or this LR channels. Now only export the left and right channel that's going to be I think to do with your final output bus but it's these two options here and the reason we're having a look at them is this this is the bass guitar and as you can see it's a MIDI performance going into a VSTI instrument. That's been rendered out as a stereo file and by default Cubase will render your stems as stereo files unless you tell it otherwise. There are advantages and disadvantages with this. So let's have a look at some of the options that either a mono down mix or a left right split channels mix offers you. One thing you should realize is that they are global. All of the files you're exporting in that pass will export either as mono files or with the left and right channels split. So you need to be aware of that if you've got a mixture of mono and stereo sources in your project. This is the acoustic guitar. And when I was doing the original mix, I panned it fully to the left. Now I've exported it, what it's exported as is a left channel with the audio information on it and the right channel with nothing on it. So what I now have is a borderline useless stereo file because all of the information is on the left hand side. So. If you have the other acoustic guitar here, which is panned to the right side, and you do it as a mono mix, it sums the silent side and the audio side, and what you end up with is a file that has half of the level of your original recording. Now, as we've talked about in these videos before, you don't necessarily want to have massive um, peaks in your audio recording. You want plenty of headroom but you don't want to be losing some of that signal at the same time if you can avoid it. This is an example of what happens with a mono mix down with a mono source that's being generated by a VSTI. This is the kick drum out of Easy Drummer and it's been split into different outputs across several different channels. So as you can see I've got a fairly healthy waveform there in the image fairly strong signal it was panned in the center it was a mono channel that's been rendered out to mono the next two show you what happens if you go down the left and right rather than getting a single stereo file you end up with two mono files now you may ask why do you do that well the answer is some DAWs um, certainly uh, older versions of Pro Tools can't handle stereo files. I'm going to guess they're few and far between these days. Most people will have upgraded to the more modern versions. But you never know. You might end up working with someone who's got a DAW that will only handle mono files. The final one shows you what happens when you render out a track that's got parts only on part of the performance and uh, the answer is 
that you end up with silences in your rendered track. So, you've got these options. You can render out in mono, you can split the channels so that you create a left and a right. What I would say is, first of all, if you're going to do that, even if you're going to create mono versions of mono sources and stereo versions of stereo sources, you're going to have to do two passes. One to select over here all of the tracks that you want in stereo and then go back through and select all of the tracks you want in mono. The other is that if you're going to be mixing these, you may well find, as I've looked at in a previous video, that you want a stereo track. If we just go into the inserts here, Just to pick an example, most VST effects operate in stereo. There are some that operate in mono, but a lot of them operate in stereo. And some of them, as we've discussed in previous videos, even come in a mono in stereo out version as well as a stereo in stereo out version. But you need a stereo track in order for the output to be stereo. It's no good putting a mono to stereo effect on a mono track because you're only going to get a mono output. You'll be able to pan that left and right across the bus that it's going into, but you won't be able to get the full effect of say a chorus or a stereo widener. So whilst you can export in mono, whilst you can, if you want, split your stereo into left and right channels. At the end of the day, you have to think about where the file is going and how it's going to be processed to determine if that's actually worthwhile as an exercise. Cubase 8 has its render in place facility, which allows you to render a stem of an existing track and that renders in stereo. And there's been quite some debate on the forums about whether or not that's a good thing and can't we have a render in place mono version. But again, the same arguments apply. As soon as you think you're going to put it through a stereo effects unit, is it really worth doing? It's a thought. Why don't you add your comments below the video and we'll see what people think. So that's it for this video. Don't forget, if you've not already signed up to my mailing list, you can go over to the blog at www.finishyoursong.com and download my Total Beginner's Guide to Home Recording, absolutely free. And uh, until next time, you take care of yourselves.